Ready? No. Try again. Are we ready? Yes. Thank you. All right. There is nothing new here today. We are doing completing the square. We did this last year at the end of the year. So the reason we have completing the square is because not all quadratics can be factorized. Okay, so we have the quadratic formula, but still the completing the square method is another method that we can use. Okay, so in this little box, yeah, I've frozen, aren't I? I have, thank you for the reminder. In the box, to find, can we have some concentration up here, please? To find the number that we need on the end of our quadratic to make a perfect square, you halve the coefficient of the x, so here's my x term, I want to halve it, which would be 4, and then I square it. So 4 squared is 16. Okay, so the number that I need is a 16 for that box there. <clears throat> now the question 1 there says, complete the square of the following and then factorise the perfect square, okay? So I'm going to go one step further and factorise that as well. It's a perfect square. You could do FOIL. You could put your two brackets there, put X out the front of each of them. You go, what times is to give 16 and what adds to give 8? And hopefully you think 4 and 4, okay? But shortcut. If it's a perfect square, it's always going to be X out the front. The number is always going to be half of that number there, which is the 4, so x plus 4 in brackets squared. Okay, you're going to want to use the shortcut because they're not always going to be very nice numbers that we're going to be using, like the next one. So we have x squared minus 5x. First of all, I need to find the missing number. So you might want your calculator for this. You're going to halve the coefficient of the x, so that's minus 2.5, then you have to square that to get minus 6.25. There should be a plus there because you've got to square the minus sign as well. Don't forget to square the, the minus. So it should be 6.25 or 6 and a quarter. I don't really like decimals. We don't like decimals when we're doing algebra-based things. Okay, so 6, .2, 6 and a quarter. Then to factorise that into a perfect square, we know we're going to have one bracket with a squared on it. The x is going to be at the front, and this number here is going to be half of that number there. So minus two and a half. Okay, that's it. That's just a quick little practice. Finding the number that you need, and then factorising it into a perfect square. Can we just... Reduce the chatter, please, until we're done up here, okay? Thank you. Question two. This is what we really want to do. We would want a bit of practice, but this is the main goal here. We want to be able to solve equations using the completing the square method, okay? Now, to do this, I always you always like to have your x squared and your x term on the left-hand side, and... Any number, because it's usually the wrong number, it's usually not the, the perfect square number, you move it off to the right. So this first one's already set up for us. It's got the x squared minus 6x, and the 2 has already been moved across to the right-hand side for us. Okay? So what we do is we take the x squared and the minus 6x, just like we were doing in question 1, and we make a perfect square. I halve the minus 6, minus 3, square it is a plus 9. Okay, now I am adding a number into my equation here. So if I have added a 9 to the left-hand side of the equation, I must... Take a 9. Add a, Add nine, a 9 to the other side. Damn it. If I was doing it all on... <laughs> you're not completely wrong, Ashley. If you're doing it all on the one side... Um, we could, when we did these, that when they weren't equations, we did do some of these um, where you just had to factorise by completing the square. We didn't have an equals to sign. And we had to do them all on the one side. We had to add it on and then take it off again because it was all on the one side. But if we're doing an equation, we want to keep them balanced, okay? So because I'm adding 9 on the left, I want to add 9 on the right. So 
I've made a perfect square. We factorize it. Halve that minus 6, that's x minus 3 squared, and 2 plus 9 makes 11. Now, all I have to do is get that x by itself. Don't expand it back out again. That kind of defeats all of what we've just done. If I want to get x by itself, all I have to do is square root to get rid of that squared. Okay? So x minus 3 equals square root of 11, and I left a gap for a reason. Plus or minus. Anytime you square root, plus or minus. Okay, and that's how we get our two solutions. Okay? Then finally, we move the 3 across to the other side. Because it's going to become a positive 3, I usually like to write that first. Positive 3, then the plus minus root 11. But you can write plus and minus root 11 plus 3. It's the same thing. And that is the answer. Some of you might want to separate those two solutions. You know how to separate the two solutions? Yeah, you might go x equals 3 plus root 11 was the first solution, or x equals 3 minus root 11 is the second solution. If you were trying to find some y values or something after that, if this was in a simultaneous equations question, we wouldn't be doing completing the square, but anyway, um, you could keep going from there. Okay? So, obviously, that is not a very nice answer. We would never have been able to factorise that quadratic. We came out with a third at the end. Let's practice it again, okay? The first thing we want is our x squared and our 4x by itself on the left-hand side. So, this time, I'm going to have to move that 10 away. So, equals minus 10, okay? Now, I want to make a perfect square. So, with the x squared and the 4x... The 4 is the key number. Halve it, square it, is 4. So I plus a 4 here, and don't forget to plus it on the other side. Balance that equation. Factorise your perfect square would be x half of that 4 is 2, x plus 2 in bracket squared, and minus 10 plus 4 is minus 6. Then we would proceed to try and get the x by itself. And my first step would be to square root that minus 6. And Ashton is shaking his head at me because he knows we cannot square root a negative number. Hello. Oh, yes. How do you So that tells you when you get to that point, when you have a negative number there, that there is actually no solution to that quadratic equation. There are quadratic equations that don't have answers, that you cannot solve for x. Okay, so there is no solution, no answers. Now those of you that are thinking about the parabolas, you know that quadratics represent parabolas. That means that you're talking about a parabola that is all the, either way, all, start again, that is all above the x-axis or all below the x-axis. It has no intercepts. That's what that means. No solutions. Okay? All right, question three. One more. Same method. The only thing I'm doing is making it yuckier by putting some fractions and other stuff in there. Okay? So, the process. I want the x squared and the 3x on the left-hand side. Move that 3 quarters away. It's the wrong number. Move it away. Okay? Then I need to complete my perfect square here by halving that 3, half of 3, that's 3 over 2, and then squaring that, which is 2 and a quarter. Okay? So I have to add the 2 and a quarter to the other side as well. All right, factorize the perfect square. Half of three is one and a half. So x plus one and a half in brackets squared. That's the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, minus three quarters plus two and a quarter is one and a half. Now, I'm going to write that as 3 over 2 because I know what's coming. I'm going to have to square root that. Okay? So, to square root that, x plus 1 and a half 
it's going to be plus or minus square root of all of 3 over 2. Now, if you're lucky, we might have had a perfect square under there. If it was 3 over 4, we might have been able to square root something. But nothing's going to square it nicely underneath that third there. So we can't really simplify it at all. All I can do is move that 1.5 across to the other side. Okay, so it's going to be x equals um, plus or minus root 3 over 2, all underneath that square root sign, and minus the 1.5, or minus another 3 over 2 there. Okay, and that's it, that's completing the square. Same process over and over and over. Isaac. I've got a question about 